manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receivers, and maker of table model radios, Admiral portable radios, radio phonograph combinations, a complete line of conventional refrigerators, and a famous Admiral dual temp refrigerator. Admiral Electric Ranges with Flexo Heat. A full line of television combinations. And the finest of them all, the famous three-foot theater. Admiral presents... Lights Out. You know, the trouble with some people is they never know when to leave off. They go out of your life, presumably, and yet, in one way or another, they keep coming back again. You know the type. Well, if you don't, you certainly will before this night is through. Light. Yes. Uh, do you realize that this is the first time we really talk together? Well, Since Kenneth and I were married. Charlotte, perhaps there's just as well. You haven't had a mother nor to bother you for six months. Oh. I did hate to leave my delightful little house in Florida to come back to this kind of weather. Well, I can understand that, but we've missed you. Thank you, dear. You know, you and Kenneth ought to go down there. Kenneth needs a vacation. And he's never been down there. Hasn't he? I didn't realize that. Why not? Oh, Elsie objected to it, of course. She objected to his going anywhere. He, she never wanted him out of her sight. You don't like the portrait, do you? I thought I noticed a disapproving mm -hmm. look the moment you came in here. Charlotte, I didn't like Elsie, so I couldn't very well approve of the portrait. There's something so watchful about it. Well, I haven't asked Kenneth to take it down. But I'm hoping that he'll let me make a few changes in the house, when we can afford it. Only he seems almost afraid to do it. Well, I imagine that's because this was always so much Elsie's house, and Kenneth gave in to all her whims about it. But good heavens, Elsie isn't his wife any longer. She's dead. And now that he's married to you, he should give in to your tastes. I'll talk to him about it. No, no, don't. Not even in fun. If he's used to the house the way it is, and likes it that way. I know how attached he was to Elsie. I'm sure that she loved him very much. Loved him? She only wanted to dominate him. She used him for her own selfish purposes. However do you mean, dominate? My dear, I meant to tell you about this whenever we had the chance, so that if Kenneth became morbid about the past, you'd be able to understand it. Charlotte, Elsie treated my son like a prisoner. Don't understand. Why would Kenneth put up with anything like that? My dear, nobody could understand it, but the fact was that she was a very possessive woman and that Kenneth yielded to her. No one could understand the reason. I'm glad you've told me about it. He's never spoken to me about Elsie at all. But, Mother, tell me this. Wasn't there some way that, well, that he could free himself of her? Yes, dear, there was. There was one way. That was by going away and leaving her and this house. 
And when he did that, well, her effect on him seemed to diminish. When he wasn't exactly in her sphere, you see? Yes, but whatever did she do while he was away? Just transfer her interest to the house alone? Oh, yes, because it was so much her house. So I'm afraid it still is with all these gray and grim walls that she likes so much. Then, of course, when Kenneth came back, she would get a hold on him again. She thrust herself at him in every possible way. I tell you, Elsie was the kind of a woman that would never let a man forget about her. Never. I called your taxi for you, ma'am. Oh, thank you, dear. Will you take the tea things, please, Dorothy? I've got to go now, dear. And get Mrs. Ashby's clothes, will you? Of course, uh, Charlotte. You have heard about this death. You know that Elsie kept it so sacred, nobody could look at it, not even Kenneth. I know, he's forbidden me to touch it. short while ago, madam. I know, but how did it come? It must have come by a messenger, I imagine. There's no postmark on it. Oh, no, no, but you must have seen someone, someone who brought it. Didn't they ring? Well, yes, madam, but when I got to the door, nobody was there. I found it, as I told you, just under the door. It strikes me as very peculiar, Dorothy, that you never have any explanation for these particular letters. They come continuously. You always bring them in, and yet you insist that you never see anyone who delivers them. Well, I tell you the truth, madam. I've never seen anyone bring those letters. I don't believe you. I think that you know something about it, but you don't want to tell me. Oh, that's not true. I know nothing more about what's in those letters than I do about any mail that comes here. Perhaps not. But I wonder if you know who writes them. Charlotte, what is it? This letter. What about it? There's nothing understandable about it. Absolutely nothing. Uh, will you please get my things, Dorothy? But Charlotte, dear, what is it? What is it that upsets you so? Has it anything to do with Kenneth? Everything to do with him. This is the ninth of its kind to come to him since we've been married. Just this peculiar kind of envelope. Oh, but my dear, how odd that you concentrate on them so. Concentrate? Mother, do you know that one of these strange gray letters was the first thing to greet us the night we came back from our honeymoon? They all come alone without any explanation. They all seem alive. So someone were waiting for him, the way he's acted. Well, how has he acted, dear? Oh, I know they're torturing him. But I always find him after he's read one of them, just sitting slumped here and, and not telling me anything about them. Charlotte, whom do you suspect of sending the letters? The way you're talking to Dorothy, I... I don't know. When I don't know whom to suspect. Yes, Dorothy, perhaps. Oh. Well, she's been with him for a long time. She was with Elsie, and she knows Kenneth so well. She's always cool to me, but she'll go out of her way to do things for him. Oh, it's a monstrous feeling, knowing that someone's preying on him, some person. But, my dear, are you convinced of this? Are you? Yes, convinced, Mother. And I'm going to make him tell me about them. It's imperative that I do. Your taxi's here now, madam. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Oh, Charlotte, I don't feel that I ought to go. You've, you've got me quite worried, dear. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I'm going to handle this. After all, it can't be something completely beyond me. No, of course not, dear. I'll ring you tomorrow. I may have something to tell you by then. I hope so. And Charlotte. Don't do anything that you're not sure about. Promise me that. Yes, I promise, Mother. Good night, dear. Good night. Good night, madam. Dorothy, when Mr. Ashby comes in, remind him about his letter, will you? And tell him that I'm upstairs. <laughs> Cold one. 
Um, how are you, Dorothy? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Well, you know, you forgot your scarf this morning, Mr. Yes, Ashley. Yes, I know I did. You were very sweet. Was it you who sent it along with... Well, uh, yes, I knew you'd want it. With Edwin? Yes. Oh, that's very really kind of you. You're a very thoughtful girl, Dorothy. You're always thoughtful. My Lord. <laughs> It, it came the usual way. Where is, uh, Mrs. Ashby now? She's upstairs. Thank you. in that letter. You look dreadful. No, no, it was nothing at all. It's, it's nothing. I don't believe it. I deliberately watched you open and read that letter. Charlotte, why should you want to do that? Because I've seen these letters before and I've seen their effect on you. Oh, darling, what is it? Who writes them? Why did you put in your pocket? Charlotte, please. I can't tell you anything about them at all. I, I can't offer you any explanation. Why not? Darling, why are you so curious about them? I've told you, I see how terribly they upset you, and I want to know why. You're so mysterious about them. It's almost as though you have some affection for them. Affection? Affection? I detest them. I only want to protect you from them. That's all I feel about them. Protect me? Good heavens, why? Oh, darling, they've been on my mind a great deal. I can't understand them. Apparently, they come out of thin air. I've never seen anyone bring them. And Dorothy says she hasn't... Charlotte, it. please, I have a tremendous headache, darling. If you don't mind, no. I'd rather... No, we must have it out together now. We must. I've waited too long for your don't, don't press me about them. Don't press me about them. But why not? Don't be so negative. Give me an explanation. I'll accept it on its own terms. Will you? All right. So, darling, now sit down. It's, it's really, it's so silly. It's not at all important. It's simply that, as a lawyer, I work for many people who think that I've, I've let them down. And they write to me in a, in a very ugly way, constantly. Now, certainly you can understand that, can't you? No. No, I can't. If that's what they are, why aren't they sent to the office? That's the only place anyone logically would write to you. Sure. Our home is supposed to be separate from our business. It's for our own happiness. Oh, I know that. I want it to be so. Oh, but then why can't you discourage them? Why can't you block them I out of... I can't. I can't discourage them. Charlotte, I can't ever stop them. You can't ever stop them. No, no, I can't stop them. You must try to understand that. I can't stop them. But they have nothing to do with you. Please don't let them frighten you. Oh, Charlotte, please don't ask me any more about them. Please don't. Would you like another drink? Yes, yes. Yes, I would. Charlotte! Charlotte! Yes? When did you open that desk? I, didn't I don't want you to touch it! Not ever! Charlotte, please. Darling, you'll have to. You'll have to forgive me. I don't mean to shout at you this way. I'm. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. It's all right, darling. I've been snappish myself. And I'm going to think about the letters the way you are. I mean about your business. Oh, please. Please, please do it. Be so much wiser. There's only one thing I'm going to ask you each time they come. What? No depression about them. If they must come, just, well, just a peaceful acceptance so that I can feel easier about you. Well? I can't promise you that, Charlotte. No matter how much I want to. But why not be more specific? 
Pacific, tell me why not? Because they are so demanding. Demanding? Yes, yes, demanding. They seem to want to, to possess me entirely. I see. Then I was right. I always thought there could be a usual explanation for them. What? That they're from some woman. Someone who loves you, oh, no, or who has some hold over you, no, who'll no. do anything she can to destroy you. No, no, that's not true. That's not so. I love you. I only want to protect you. Protect me from what? It seemed just a moment ago, Mr. Ashby. It's addressed to you. And now, before we continue with our Lights Out story for tonight, Lights On for Admiral. Jim, don't tell me you've been marketing. What's the matter, dear? I just stopped by the store. Where do you think I'm going to put all this food? The refrigerator is packed full right now. Oh, there's probably room. Here, I'll show you. All right, Mr. Smarty. You see? What did I tell you? We simply got to have a bigger refrigerator. A bigger refrigerator? Where would we put it in this little kitchen? Put it right where your old one is. Take out that old-style refrigerator, and in the very same place, put a big, roomy, new Admiral, like this. Here's America's most compact, big refrigerator. Takes up no more space in the kitchen, yet holds 50% more food. Two extra bushels of food. There's room for everything in an Admiral, so you can save by buying at quantity prices. The new Admirals hold so much, because they're designed with no wasted space. Every inch has been put to use. Look, the cold compartment is full length, cold clear to the floor. Shelves are high, wide, and deep. The big freezer chest is full width, with a freezer drawer for more frozen foods and meat. And over here, the new convenient door shelves for extra bottles, jars, eggs, and handy butter keeper. Yes, in an Admiral, you get no wasted space, full length cold, full width freezer, new door shelves, and yet it costs only pennies a day. Only pennies a day? Yes, only pennies a day. Dorothy. Wait. You write those letters, don't you? Don't you? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, madam. I don't know what you're accusing me of. You're in love with Mr. Ashby, aren't you? Charlotte. You think you're so clever, don't you? You think that you can force him away from me without my realizing it. Charlotte! You write to him and tell him how much you love him. You remind him of how loyal you've Charlotte, been. you're out of your mind. You don't have no idea what you're saying. Oh. Dorothy couldn't possibly have sent those letters. No, I don't. I swear I didn't, Mrs. Ashby. They've been as much a mystery to me as they've been to you. Believe me. I don't believe please, it. Please, please. Dorothy, have Edward take you home in the car now. Mrs. Ashby is terribly upset. I'll talk to you tomorrow, and, and I, I shall explain it then, I promise. Yes, Mr. Ashby. Good night, Dorothy. Good night. Good night, madam. Charlotte, Dorothy didn't send those letters. She would have no earthly reason for doing so. Please, darling, you know that I love you. I've never thought about Dorothy or anyone but you. Then why do you torture me? Why do you try to destroy our love by, by not trusting me to share the letters with you? I don't know now whether they're from Dorothy or from someone else. Charlotte. 
Charlotte. Would Darcy have used this stationery? I can't even see the words. I can't even see the letters. Look closely. There's nothing to see. Yes. Wait a minute. I... I think I see... Come. Yes, and... And your name. But what's the signature, Kenneth? Give me the name. Look at the engraving. It's not Dorothy's name, is it? But I can't see anything. I... Yes, yes, I can. Wait a minute. I think I see E L Elsie. 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 Tonight would have been our wedding anniversary. That letter says she's coming back for me. Tonight. Now, Charlotte. Now, do you believe it? I can't believe it, Kenneth. I simply must, can't. Must, must. They come only from her. Only her. I tell you, Elsie was the kind of woman who would never let a man forget about her. Never. I simply can't believe it. I... You'll have to believe it. And try to understand it. That I can never be free of her. These letters are... Constant reminders of her. Gray reminders. I must try to face it as it is. I can never stop them from coming. Yes, you can, and you must stop. How, how? Shall I call the police and ask for protection from them? Shall I say that they're from a dead woman who's trying to drive my wife mad? Or shall I say this one has a, a particular message that she's coming for me tonight? But she's never coming back. Darling, tell me this. Did you ever love her? I was infatuated with her. She had a, a tremendous hold over me. She was very strange. Why? Why do you ask? Because I must be sure of something. Very sure before I can help you. If you want me to help. What is it you want to know? Why did you stay with her? The fact that you did makes it seem the letters were more important, much no, more no. than you told me. No, no, me. I told you all I feel about But them. you haven't told me if you loved her. Love her. I grew to detest her. But then why did you stay with her? I was afraid. Afraid? I was afraid of what she might do. When she died, I thought finally I was free, but I'm not free. I will never be free. Oh, darling, don't you see? She's only trying to possess you now the way she possessed you before. But she never can again. She's dead. I don't know, Charlotte. I don't know. I've tried to think that way. I've... I've tried and tried, and every time I rationalize, when the letters come, my mind gets confused and so torn. She's always had such a power over me. But then show that she hasn't got that power any longer. Show that you can pass over the letters as easily as you pass over her memory. It's the only way to free yourself. There is no way. Yes, there is. We'll go away together, just you and I. Your mother said we could go to Florida, and she said it was one way that worked. When you left Elsie behind, you left her free, didn't she? She left yes. fear behind in this house? Yes, yes, it's then true. Then that's what you must do now. You must deny her now the way you did before. No, no, it's no use, Charlotte. It's no use. Of course, we could go away, and I'd, I'd be free from fear out of the house, but we'd have to come back. When we came back, the letters would start coming. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't come to a strange house. What do you mean, a strange house? I mean that this house won't be her house when we come back. We'll wipe it clear of all reminders of her. We'll make it ours, ours alone. Yes. Yes, that might be a way. Yes, darling, now, now go and ring your mother. Tell her when we're going to go. Now, darling. We'll draw up the plans, and we'll have them started the moment we leave. Yes. This will be our home when we come back. All Every right. square inch of it. Every room will be ours. Even this room. Yes. She's coming. 
She's here. Then face her now. Get yourself up her now. I cannot. I can never escape her here. Nowhere else but here. Wherever we go, there'll be no escape. Oh, Rid yourself of her now. Face her now. Destroy your memory. Now, darling. Now! She's gone. She's left, She's gone. darling. We're safe. She's gone. She'll never come back. We're safe. Isn't it strange how, after all this time, yes, a letter for me? Thank you. Oh, no. Don't tell me it's from Elsie. And now, before we tell you of the exciting Lights Out drama for next week, here is news of a very sensational nature. In celebration of Admiral's two millionth TV Jubilee, here's the greatest offer in television history. A beautiful Admiral radio phonograph combination worth $90 will be given to you free. Yes, free of extra cost when you buy an Admiral TV console. Your choice of many cabinet styles, all with 17 or 20 inch rectangular Dynaray tube for the clearest picture in television. And when you buy, you get this free. An old triple play radio phonograph that plays all records regardless of size or speed. Here's complete home entertainment for the price of television alone. Your support is vitally needed in the fight against cancer. Guard your family by joining the 1951 Cancer Crusade of the American Cancer Society. Mail your contribution to Cancer, care of your local post office. Join us again on Lights Out next Monday night when your Admiral dealer will present Leslie Nielsen in an unusual Lights Out thriller entitled The Lost Will of Dr. Rant. Meanwhile, be sure to see Admiral's fast-moving variety show, Stop the Music, over another television network. Consult your newspaper for time and station. This is Ralph Paul, bidding you good night for Admiral. <laughs>